This video is brought to you by Aralik, makers of the Altair G1 digital streaming deck. Click to aralik.com for more information. Blue Sound Power Node 2i. It's got Marie Kondo minimalism written all over it. I reviewed this in February of last year. We don't need a hi-fi rack. There is very little cable salad coming off the back. We just add loudspeakers. And it's Kallax Fi, so it'll fit inside a Kallax Cube. And it's also what I call Future Fi because it's an integrated amplifier with a streaming DAC built in plus more as we'll see. So it does Rune Ready, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Apple Airplay. It also has the Blue OS system inside here with their own streaming hardware and their app integrates all sorts of streaming services including Amazon, Kobo's and Tidal as well if you want to do it that way. And it has controller apps for Mac OS and Windows as well as Android and iOS, so the full suite. Oh yeah, it does two-way Bluetooth. It has a headphone socket on the front. So hi-fi PR companies, when they get lazy, they like to talk about one amp or one DAC or one CD player to rule them all. It's like they watch too much Lord of the Rings and can't forget it. So this is a bit like that. It's like one streaming amp to rule them all, but I would never use that horrible, horrible cliche. It's time for that cliche to go away. Anyway, why am I talking about this now over a year and a half later? Well, because we have a new version. It's behind me on my sideboard. It is not called the 3i or the 3. It is just called the Power Node in capital letters. That makes it version 4 in this series of devices from Blue Sound. What's new in the new model? Well, we have eARC on the back. That's in case you have a TV and you want to connect the back of the unit to your TV. We have a new DAC inside. I don't know the model. As I keep saying, the power supply, which is also changed in this thing, I think, has more of an impact. So does the analog output stage. So let's not get hung up on DAC chip models, please. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the new one, this is the biggest change I think, is that it has 20 more watts per channel than the old model. So this one has 60 watts per channel, that one's got 80 watts per channel, and it's what Blue Sound call hybrid digital amplification, so it's kind of like Class D. So we still get all the streaming functionality that we had before. In fact, the only thing that this device and that device don't offer is a phono stage, but it, you know, 900 euros, frankly, I don't care because there's just so much packed into this thing and that thing.
Now, how does the new one sound compared to the old one? It's not a huge difference. I think the increase in power on the loudspeaker outputs is responsible for me hearing slightly more refinement from the new model. It's a bit smoother up top, and I don't mean rich, as I've often described the Hegel H390 as, I mean just smooth. It's not, it's not cold or clinical, it's actually nice and soft and smooth. I keep saying smooth, but it really is smooth. Do you get it? Smooth. And also with the new one, we can push it a bit further in terms of SPL before the sound starts to harden, which is a good thing. So in other words, we get a slightly more relaxed presentation from this new one. It's a bit more easeful. So remember this easefulness and the smoothness because we'll be coming back to it very shortly. But my favorite new feature of the 2021 edition of the Power Node is on the top panel. There is a larger touch panel with proximity sensors. So it fades away when you're not near it. When you get close to it, it lights up. And there's a volume slider, a larger one. And there's also buttons for next track, previous track, play pause. But right along the top, there are five little circles. And this is what I think is really great is that you can assign radio stations and inputs to those five individual presets. I've done four here. So I've got three radio stations, BBC Six Music, a Soma FM chill cold wave type station, and Deutschland Funk Kultur for practicing my German. And what I love about it is that I can just walk up to the device click one of those presets and it starts instantly. There isn't a long pause between clicking the preset button and that radio station coming through the loudspeakers, which I think is really great. So you can almost treat it like an old school radio. You can go bang, 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 depending on which radio station you want to listen to. And I think that makes it more inclusive for more members of the family because not everybody wants to kind of pull the phone from the pocket and go blue OS app and then what do I want to do? Some people just want to be able to walk up to the device push one button and their radio station comes up. And you can do that with this new version. And I think that's brilliant. But I have just made a very long video about the KEF KC62 subwoofer, my first subwoofer. So normally with a product like this, I completely ignore its subwoofer outputs, but not this time. Oh no. So I engage the subwoofer using the app and you can set the crossover point at no, I won't say any frequency, but I think it goes down to 40 hertz and up to about... I've got it set at 50 hertz here. So that's inside the app. Now, obviously, that low-pass filter is what goes out of the subwoofer output. It's an LFE output. So that goes into the LFE input on the sub. Nothing extraordinary about that. But what is very unusual and what I think is absolutely fantastic is that blue sound inside... The, the DSP of this power node, and also of the old power node as well, they apply a high pass filter to the loudspeaker outputs, a corresponding high pass filter. So wherever you set the low pass filter, the power node will load in a corresponding high pass filter for your loudspeakers. Now ask yourself, how many hi-fi amplifiers do you know of that add a high pass filter to the mains when integrating a subwoofer? Blue Sound call this their base management system. So they high pass the speaker outputs and they low pass the sub output, which is great. Why does it matter? Well, it means that the mid bass driver on a two way like the KF LS50 Meta here that I have is no longer being asked to do all the low bass that it would do normally from another kind of non high pass filtering amplifier. And that translates to a more expressive mid range and that ease that I talked about. So with the sub in play, I just get more ease out of the LS50 Metas because they're high pass filtered. And for me, that's a, a total win.
think about this. If we're not asking the, the loudspeakers to do what they would normally do, i.e. go below 50 hertz in this case, in some cases it's 80 hertz depending upon your preference and your room and your setup, but if we're not asking the, the two-way stand mounts to do low bass, that means we're asking less of the amplifier that's powering those loudspeakers. So if you're worried whether 80 watts or 60 watts in the case of the Power Note 2i, if you're worried that that's not going to be enough, if you're integrating a sub, those worries dissolve a little bit. They, I mean, for me, they fall away. Because playing this system, so KEF LS50 Meta, KC62 Sub, Blue Sound Power Node, capital letters, 2021 version. It, it just sounds absolutely fantastic. I shouldn't swear, but it really, for me, I think it's actually better than the LS50 Wireless 2, which are over there at the moment. Their own sort of integration with the sub. Now, I'm not knocking what Kef have done with their app, but I just, I guess it's because may, maybe I just prefer the LS50 Meta in the long run over the LS50 Wireless 2 in, in terms of it's that top end smoothness that I really like. So when amps can really draw that out, that is a real win for me because I'm very sensitive to top end etch or brightness. I'm not saying that the LS50 Wireless 2 are bright or anything like that. I'm just, oh my God, I'm just rambling in all sorts of directions here, aren't I? What I'm just, what I want to do is I want to enthuse about the fact that the Power Node and the Power Node 2i before it give us a fantastic base management system for sub integration that has a knock on effect onto the mains, so the uh, LS50 Meta, and therefore a sort of fold back effect on the amplifier, in this case the hybrid digital in the Power Node, a fold back effect on how many watts need to be drawn by the loudspeakers because it's not being asked to do low bass or lower than it would normally do if it were not high pass filtered. Jeez, I think I actually make this sound more complicated than it really is. I'm, I'm sorry if I do, but I just I guess I'm very enthusiastic about this setup. Not least because these things are so small. Look how tiny and tidy this is. And, and, 900 euros for the old one, the new one. So if we go LS50 Meta, I think they're about 1,500 euros, plus the sub, which is also 15, so that's three grand. Add one of these, you've got 3,900, so we're into a four grand system. That's the same as adding a KC62 to the LS50 Wireless 2. I think I prefer this setup to the LS50 Wireless 2 with a KC62. You might like the greater air bite and eagerness of the LS50 Wireless 2. I don't, I like a more sort of relaxed top end. Maybe it's because I listen to a lot of like post-punk, indie rock, electronic music, all that kind of stuff that very few audiophiles listen to and many of you like to get grumpy with me about for listening to and go, why don't you listen to classical music? Because I don't. Anyway, so I'm here to maximize my personal experience with the music that I like. I'm here to make that as good as possible I've hit pay dirt here, I think, with this particular setup. So yeah, I'm sharing that with you today. So if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards FutureFi, because this Blue Sound Power Node range is very much FutureFi and GalaxyFi. If you like that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.